The Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. This is Gerard with episode number 17 of Florida's Fresh Mix on the Florida Podcast Network, a random mix of Florida's freshest personalities. Listen in. This is Amber, the production assistant for the Florida Podcast Network, and I am here with your host, Gerard. What's up, Gerard? What's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. We have a very exciting episode for all the fresh, fresh mix listeners on this Fresh Mix Friday. I want that to become a hashtag. I like that. Uh, Gerard, you got the chance to talk with Craig Brooks and David Foreman of Clarity Creative in Orlando. AKA Craig David. I just dubbed them that. So Craig David, Swedish <laughs> pop band, <laughs> right? Is that what it was? Okay. <laughs> I had no idea. A what little bit. Meant. All right. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a, it was a, never mind. <laughs> yeah. You, you'll hear it in the, in the yeah. interview. Not only are they the head bosses of Clarity Creative, but they're actually joining the Florida Podcast Network with their new show, Texploration. Woohoo. Woohoo. And actually, this is the first time we've announced this new show. It's nowhere on our social media. And yeah, I don't think it's ever been mentioned on the website. So it's called Tech Exploration. I kind of wanted to spell that out real quick. It's, so it's capital T-E-C-H and then lowercase exploration minus the E. It's easier when you see it in print. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it, yes. But when you say it, it sounds you know perfect. Tech Exploration. Yeah. Unfortunately, we do not know the launch date of this new show after this interview i expect to be you know because i have a little inside track on the uh, fpn uh, comings and goings so i expect to be one of the first people to know what the launch date's going to be so i can subscribe immediately especially after talking to these guys i think i made some new besties i think you did actually i mean i can totally see you all sitting around drinking some beers kicking it back and just hanging out with ease like you sound very comfortable gerard and you normally do you normally do. But this was different. No, this was like, uh, yeah, it was like, uh, it's like as if my sister has said, hey, look, these guys are nerds just like us. And you really need to meet them and have a beer with uh, some guys that are as uh, as nerdy as we are. And also, listener, you're going to want to stick around for, I want to say, like, I don't know, the last 10 minutes or so of the entire interview. Because, Gerard. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> yep. Yep. You already know. But it's awesome. It's awesome. Seriously. Gerard and Craig and David. Went on this little nerd high together. And <laughs> that's not and a bad thing. You say nerd it's like it's not. Bad. Oh, no. And, and what do we mean by nerd? You're going to have to find out because they define what a dork is, a geek, and a nerd. And yes, they all are different things. Never knew that. We nerds are dropping knowledge on the difference between us and the geeks and the dorks. <laughs> Learn something. If that's the only takeaway from today, <laughs> yeah, it's that. Right. Yeah, learn something. <laughs> and if you're uh, into the uh, Marvel versus DC controversy, then you'll you'll get some of that too. It's all there. It's all there. All the all the nerd things. They're they're there. Trust us. For those who've been listening for a while now, you kind of understand Gerard's personality. He's chill. He's laid back, but he really does get to the heart of a lot of what these people do, why they do it. So if you know someone who you think would be a great Fresh Mix guest for Gerard to interview, you should totally let us know. You can fill out a submission form on our website, freshmixpodcast.com. And you can also email me, amber, at flintstonemedia.com. Also, I thought I should let you guys know that Texploration isn't the only new show coming to the Florida Podcast Network. But I can't mention... What? I, I know, I know. What a cliffhanger. All right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, because I, I seriously cannot mention anything about the other ones. But just know they're on the way. And I think you all are really going to enjoy them. And we'll probably have those hosts on as guests as well. So stay tuned for that. All right, Jared, let's get into your conversation with Craig Brooks and David Foreman, the host of the newest Florida Podcast Network show, Exploration. Let's do it. Hello, Fresh Mix fans. Today, I'm exceptionally looking forward to this interview. For the first time, we have worlds colliding because I will be hosting the 
host of the newest addition to the Florida Podcast Network family, Craig and David of the upcoming Text Exploration Podcast. And I'm extremely excited. How are you guys? Oh, oh we're excited. We're, we're, excited. we're beyond excited. Excited is like not even good enough. We're elated. We're ecstatic. We cannot wait to talk more about literally wherever this conversation goes. But of course, I know some of it will touch on tech exploration and some of the things we're passionate about. But we are very excited and can't thank you enough for, for having us on the Fresh Mix. See, I'm, I'm already, uh, you're already uh, giving me dividends as far as my excitement level because you said excited, elated. I love synonyms. I love vocabulary because I'm a grammar Nazi. And I know you guys are nerds too. I've, I've done time. a lot of background on you. So I'm very excited about this. Now, I must start off by saying, when I first saw that your names were Craig and David, I hearkened back to when I was living in um, in Amsterdam and there was this music star at the time, Craig David. I don't know what he's doing now. Seven Days. I know he, oh my God, I love Craig yeah, David. Yeah, seven, he's so good. Seven Days, one of my favorite songs. Very talented. And, and that's when he first emerged on the scene. I don't know what he's doing these days, but gosh, that guy was good. And he was playing in all, rocking all the clubs. All his songs are playing in all the clubs in um in Amsterdam. And so when I saw you guys, I was thinking, Craig, David, it sounds like kind of like Brangelina or something like that. But, you know, and you guys are like, you know, bosom buddies. And I really want to delve into the origins story of your friendship. But I have to warn you guys. Do it. That, you know, you know, you said that you've listened to a couple of the um, past the early episodes. Ep- yeah, the early. Yes. And, you know, our podcast is about, you know, talking to movers and shakers in Florida and, and talk about these talking to these interesting people in all walks of life about what they do. And you you guys definitely fall into that category. But the difference with this interview is that I don't want this to be a plug for your business. People are going to find out about your business through your amazing podcast, Tech Exploration, which is uh, up and coming on the Florida Podcast Network. I want to plug your story. Yeah. I want to plug you know, your vision. And I find that and your, and your friendship and your, uh, your approach to life and business, you're going to get two minutes to talk about what you guys do at Clarity Creative in Orlando. And after that, we're going to deep, deep into the, the meat of how your life story and your philosophy fits into what makes your uh, business unique. And uh, is that okay with you? And it really has to be because, you know, I'm the Gerard, beyond okay. Gerard, we might surprise you. I feel like if you're game, we've got like an under 30 second version about the business. We are more excited <laughs> to talk to you about not just our friendship because the business really actually stemmed from the friendship. Like you really opened the door there that I'm like, uh oh, we're going to talk about the four agreements. That's a book we recently encountered. I we, have read like, that. Yeah, that's a great like, book. It is a great book. And and like how things like that, you you open the door there where I, we appreciate you even willing to give us a, two minutes, but I could give you the quick and dirty. We, we are an online digital marketing agency here in Central Florida, and we do web stuff. And we're, we're super happy to answer anybody's questions about web stuff, but we're way more excited to meet people, to connect with people, business owners or not, mind you, especially through the the new show. That's why kind of we're so jazzed about tech exploration because it isn't about pumping uh, the agency. We're fortunate that the agency has kind of organically grown. And I do believe it's because of our friendship that that even happened that way, right? So we've been friends since the mid-90s, 1996. You're going to think we're lying here, but we're not. Both of our mothers are named Melanie. And they met outside of our middle school here in Central Florida before we met one another in 96, when we were coming for our first year of school in Florida. I'm from Staten Island, New York. He's from upstate where? White Plains. I always get that wrong. White Plains. I always want to say Rochester. No. It's not even near there, is it? <laughs> That's like on the other side of the state. Sure. Let me tell you something. Geography is a very bad subject for me. So the moms <laughs> met and realized, uh-oh, we both have a kid about to go into seventh grade. We should, we should connect them up. So we did that. And he uh, was a lot cooler than me. In, in the middle school, high school, he like was a surfer guy and like had a lot of friends and stuff. And I did not. So he totally didn't want to hang out with me that much until more of high school and college, which we also went to the same ones. And then the relationship super blossomed into, I think, the kind of like a powerful friendship. I was in his wedding party and then the business stuff came. But again, the whole common thread was the friendship through and through. 
through, through hard times, through things I needed. He was there for me. I, I try to be there for him if he needs me. And boy, I mean, that makes the business side even easier when it's like that. I know a lot of people say like, don't go into business with friends and stuff like that. And that is true axiom in most circumstances. But when you get to a place of bold honesty, transparency, and accountability with your partner, that honestly could be in regular relationships, let alone business ones. It, it opens things up. We, we like, we tell each other the truth, truth. Now we did not always David, right? Mm -mm. There were times in the old days where we would pull punches, but we don't do that anymore because it, it really hurt everything we were trying to do, whether it was for a client or for ourselves. So man, I think that the friendship is that common thread and open honesty is our, is our vibe. And boy, that, that does pertain to our business too, but that's my long-winded plug. That wasn't really a plug. This is great. I mean, I think that um, when you talk about friendship and, you know, I've always said that I, I pride myself on having, and you know, people that know me that, you know, didn't know me from college, they're just shocked at how many amazing friends I've drawn to me over the years, particularly in my college years. And, you know, your, your, your friend should be something you should be able to say anything to, but that know you well enough that there are, you know, I'm thinking about my, my, uh, my best friend and he, <laughs> we can literally say anything. It could be as yep. mean or devastating or personal. Uh, 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 and, and we can say it in front of people or to each other. And people are shocked. Like it doesn't matter because we both know each other so well that there are probably three things for each of us that we just do not touch because we know that those are the don't touch topics. Right. And other than that, everything goes, you know, like, no, I love that. so if you have trust and you also both have the same respect for each other and you both can kind of, you know, uh, add equally to the business. I'm not saying add the same things necessarily because well, actually, I add I far business... less. I, I want to be clear. I <laughs> add far less to this than he does, <laughs> <laughs> but you, there's gotta be a synergy and there's gotta, you gotta, Every you gotta place. both bring something to the table. And if you can work that out and, and be honest about it, uh, then it's, it's great to work with your friend. Agreed. So, that's anyway, the game though, right? Is getting yeah. through the stuff that gets hard for everybody, which is the, the, the things you so <laughs> eloquently put. Those are the hard things for people where they're like, they, they're going to pull the punch too often or they're not going to get to those competitive advantages that they might have that they could bring to the table. So the Melanie's brought you together. They right? did. How did you make that transition from being friends? Well, first of all, from you know Dave, uh, David being standoffish and then finally being like, all right, you're cool enough to hang out with me. Um, how did you transition he from- He worked for it. He worked for it. He made me, he he made me put it. the time in. He worked for it. He earned it. He earned it back. <laughs> How'd you go from that friendship transitioning into becoming uh, business partners? And, and I know that you have a very family-oriented philosophy towards your business. I really want to delve into that. Yeah, well, I'll get back into, you know, we, we were kind of chatting about it a little bit earlier where it's like, you know, finding the person that is like kind of your opposite, right? And and Craig and I are 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 very like in many similar ways, but yet we're opposites on 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 for very obvious things. And while I would call him more on the creative side and mine's a little bit more on the function side, bringing those things together, especially in 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 our type of business really goes well together. So I realized that alone, I didn't, I, I liked what I did alone. I didn't love what I did when I was trying to do it myself and kind of talked with him about it. He's like, I can, I can talk to some clients. I can write some, some content. I was like, fantastic. Like, let's work together. We, we, we can, we can kind of come together and have a, 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 a an even better project. I could do things that I like to do. You can do things that that you like to do, and and let's build a brand out of it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how it was. It just happened to be it was marketing. Um, he also had another business at the time that he was he was running, and and he had kind of brought me on to help market it a little bit, and it worked. It it was successful. So it was kind of like the uh, we know what we're doing. So it was like we could you know have other people kind of pay us for this. Exactly. David was coding for years and years uh, before we we got into business together. And I was doing my own thing, a lot of different things from, from bartending to uh, taking photos in clubs to uh, a marketing business to what ended up being a, an entertainment business that he helped me uh, really scale and grow. But in 2008 into nine, it was our first kind of client as clarity. And it was an auto body shop. And I remember it well, because we got that the check in hand 
And it was the slow motion montage high five that really kicked this off. And that client is still a client. We host their website. To your question about family, I think it's such a critical thing for us because not just that our families vacation together, but we spend time with each other's even parents, which is like the grandparents of the children. And to, to trickle that into the business, it's just about priority, right? So if we outwardly are expressing to our team members that family matters and family first, that's so that they know that if they ever had anything they need, we're, we're here for them. We're here to give them the time that they may need to, to deal with that. Support sometimes may come and need to be there, but family first isn't just a thing we say. It's something we live, meaning like if my kid needs me, I'm sorry, I, I love David too, but it's going to be my kid first. It's going to be my wife first, but he right. supports that and I support it right back. And we feel the same way for our team members. So I, I don't know if that's the direction you you were poking me into, but that is how we feel about uh, that family vibe. No, I think that's right. I, you know, as a, as a young attorney, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, you know, date myself, but I've done that several times on this show and I'm pretty proud <laughs> of it. Cause, cause I look great, but the point is that this, this when, is true, <laughs> but um, yeah, in my, when I was a young lawyer 20 years ago, uh, you know, I didn't think much about family. I'm, I'm very close with my family, but you know, I'm, I'm not married. I don't have any kids that, of which I'm aware. And so I was just <laughs> a young lawyer making money, having funny fun in South beach and uh, as I got older and, and was thinking about partnership, you know, when you're when you're in a first year, second year, you think, OK, yeah, I'll just stay here and make partner. It's great. But at, but the rigmarole of the job is such that it just kind of sucks the life at you out of you. And I was single and e- even having a girlfriend was extremely, extremely tough. I kind of had an epiphany where I kind of looked around the office and I thought about the partners that were around me, you know, uh, and I was like, are they happy? And I just didn't, I couldn't think of a single one of them that I thought, you know, except for, you know, the, the higher, higher ups um, that maybe were, you know, very, very happy. And, um, and, and maybe I was kind of imputing my own fear or, uh, or some suppositions onto them, but I was like, I need to get out of here. I need to, you know, at least if, you know, I, 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 I'm going to want to have kids one day, I'm going to, you know, want to have, you know, free time. Uh, to do things. I want to control my time. So I totally, I, I get it. And, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of entrepreneurialism. Do you guys have a background working like for the man or has, have oh, you guys definitely. always been entrepreneurs yeah. or big uh, time? That's, Oh, yeah. I was, I was working my way up in corporate America for a, a, a major pharmacy retailer. It was, I was on my way to be community leader, district manager. I was told how I had to move to Minnesota or Iowa. You had to tow the company line, right? If something was good or something was bad, you could only tell your staff what they told you to say when it wasn't even really sometimes even the truth, right? Or it was a, you know, a stretch version of it. It was toxic. It was, it was not great for the family. It was not something I wanted to, to do the rest of my life. And I watched, yeah, further and further as the people that were there, just how unhappy they were, right? The, 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 the people that were there longer and longer, you you could tell they just didn't see opportunity. So it was it was that, and then knowing that if I ever was to do something, I would not be creating that same environment. I would not be creating that same world where people had to worry about that. And I wasn't able to move up the ladder that way, but I right out of college, which uh, also was was many many years ago. To to your earlier point of dating yourself, uh, <laughs> right out of college, I got a corporate job. I was a textbook editor. Uh, Cause I was an English uh, major and all that. It was cool. And every family was excited for me and people were like, Oh man, you got a job the day after graduation. Awesome. Wait, hold great. on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I have to stop. Yeah. You. Textbook yeah. editor was cool. I think what was cool about it is I got a job is what I think the people were. Oh, okay. Were, Cause an English degree, <laughs> full disclosure to, to the fresh mix listeners, the English degree, not the most valuable in the real world, not easiest to get, uh, gainful employment beyond teaching and teaching wasn't something I was interested in. So no, the job wasn't cool. And it's like, you knew where I was going. It was so uncool and cubicle life was so rough on my psyche that the, there was no amount of wine that could fix it. I had to leave and, and, and find my way through doing my own businesses that I, I did start that entrepreneurial journey in, in high school. It's that I kind of laid off of it in college and followed that and, and had that corporate job for a couple of years. But the cubicle life did not suit my personality. You're speaking my language. I'm, I'm all about 
loving what you do. I mean, you're only in, you're only uh, on this orb once, as far as we know, and it's it's very important to be happy doing what you do. Um, if you're not happy, supplement it with something that you love. That's why I'm here on the mic with you guys. Right. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I've been a lawyer for 20 years. I'm great at what I do. There aren't that many things that surprise me anymore. And I'm, I'm a nerd like you guys. I'm a voracious learner. I know that one of you said curiosity is an underrated attribute. I love that. Just, I'm going to give you carte blanche. Just curiosity is an underrated attribute. Go. I owe David for this. I, even though I believe I'm the one that said it, I owe him for it. And, and here's why. I wasn't always as curious as, as I am now. And he stoked that curiosity and, and, and not just because we're on a podcast right now, but he was trying to get me to listen to podcasts, like I said, 10 years ago. Why? Because there's information in them, right? There's something there that you didn't know before. And him teaching me better ways to Google. This is just true, literally true from 12 years ago. There are better ways to find content out there. And that seed of curiosity, I was always interested in things, and as was he, but I think he took a, a, a deeper dive into what can I do? And, and the reason I say that is because this was an individual that at like 11 and 12 years old was coding websites in the early 90s, right? That is the definition of curiosity. He didn't take a class at the time to do it. He yep. didn't go and have a college degree in it. To me, that's the definition of curiosity. And he inspired me over the years of our friendship to, to do that myself. And boy, do I wish it for any and everyone because the things you just, and I don't, it's going to sound literal. Clearly you don't know something you don't know, but it goes so much deeper than that. It's like an exponential kind of difference in when you are actively seeking to know something new, your mind, I don't have like the data on which synapses are popping or what's going, but it opens things up and you open yourself up to new individuals that you would never connect in before. The fact of the matter is meeting those people is one of the most fun things that I get to do about, about this job, which is why, again, the, the show spoke to me in such a way of like, so you mean we just get to talk to more people that do even cooler things sometimes than we do? Some of them maybe don't do as cool things, but cool is all relative, isn't it? It's like, I may think what they think, what they do, and they think it's boring, but I think it's cool and vice versa. So I, I think that's kind of, what keeps the fire ever growing over here for us growth and develop development is so important because what you learned yesterday unfortunately is already been replaced the next day and there's just easier better more efficient ways to do things and what we do and how how we can learn and so it, it's just it, it's become you know one of those things that i got to learn it the first time but I realize I got to build on top of that. And the, the, the building of it, you know, just it makes things better. It makes things easier and can sometimes usually make things more fun. I, I guess I was always just very used to the learning and have tried to bring Craig along. But it's always just been something for, for me that I've always I've enjoyed exploring. I've enjoyed learning. I've enjoyed kind of embracing something new. So, you know, one thing I really appreciate about you guys is that you seem to share my philosophy, which is. You know, you know what you know, and you know what you don't know. Sometimes you have to fake it till you make it in in, in this sure. world. Don't don't get me wrong, but I I have a, you know more respect for people that kind of admit, hey, look, you know, I'm I uh, I know a lot of things, but uh, you know, talk to me. I like to tell my clients, talk to me like I'm five, and explain oh, to yeah. me what you do. I, I see the podcast as a way for you know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, when I subscribe to your podcast, which I definitely will, and I'll, I'll listen to it uh, voraciously, uh, I, I, I expect that you guys will not only share your knowledge about many different things uh, in the tech space and perhaps beyond, but also it's your opportunity to learn more from your guests. And, that, you know, I, and, I, and let me tell you, it's going to be a great ride for you guys because I've learned so much about so many different things. I've learned about things I did not, not even know existed uh, in just the um, 16 interviews I've done so far. Talk to me about, you know, what kind of topics you expect to cover in your podcast and what you expect to gain from it personally. What we're most excited about is the, the fact that we're going to connect with other potential business owners, not everyone's going to be a business owner, mind you. I mean, we even recorded some already and it wasn't with business owners, but people within a tech program that's incredible out of South Florida. And I can't wait for people to hear uh, all about the, that women in tech program. But learning on that level, while it wasn't about necessarily a new piece of software, a new app or anything like that, it was 
pulling that curtain back and, and maybe sharing with people all these amazing opportunities that are out there. And I think for us, whether we're talking to a company founder, somebody that just happened to have a good idea, or again, just somebody that is doing anything relating to technology and innovation in the state of Florida, it's so exciting that there is a very high likelihood that we aren't going to know all that we want to know about what they do and what they're about. And while we very much uh, are going to be adding value to each episode with little tools and tricks and things that people can kind of take away from an, an, a, of an episode that maybe isn't even about the the individual or the company that we're referring to. Because some of those tips and tricks might just be helpful things that relate to tech because we all use tech in some application. But we are really motivated by those new entities, those people that we just would never encounter otherwise you're like let's be honest like how else would we have connected with you if we didn't come through this network right and we're having a great conversation now (laughs) there you go in Uh, miami uh, at the nightclub (laughs) but like how else are we going to potentially talk to some of these people but by having the the podcast and sure does it's not just talk but it's be motivated by these people to be driven by these people you know i mean they, they they they're they're where they are because of of, of some fire within them. And, and I'd like to kind of feed off of that as well. So, you know, you guys have known each other a long time. You guys have been friends since what, 13? Yeah, that's right. 13. Okay. So uh, I remember what 13 was like. And uh, I know that you guys, uh, you guys went to, to college together as well, right? Indeed. And high school, right? Okay. All of, them, oh, yeah. all of the so, schools. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know you don't know me that well. I'm very curious during your school years, and let's just say you can pick any era. I want each of you to tell me an embarrassing story about the other. Oh, an embarrassing about the other? Here's what yep. you, you didn't realize. You, you really loaded him up and you didn't load me up because <laughs> I have done way more stupid things than he has. He was, okay, so I love the question, by the way, but why it stinks for me and it's cool for him is you didn't see his eyes just then. He did one of those things where his eyes started to flicker because it's like he's going through 14 stories and I have to do the boring version, which is David has been the responsible one in the group for like an era. We're talking 20 plus years. He he got married, bought a house, all this early while I was still literally drunk on a bench downtown. You know what I'm saying? Like it's really difficult to find an embarrassing story about David because he's really been acting like an appropriate citizen for my entire life. And I say that with frustration on purpose because I, on the other hand- Stop stalling, Craig. Stop stalling. I don't have a good one about him. He doesn't embarrass himself the way I did. Why don't we let David go first? And, you know, Dave, you can drop two, three if you want, but and and, and let Craig try to come up with something. ones, bro. You could do the- the weird parties at Riverwind, if you remember any of those, you could oh, do yeah, you could do whatever you want. Lots of stuff. There oh, was a boy. chest do you, wax. Craig, incident. do you get embarrassed? Are well, you I do not. I do not get okay. embarrassed. Oh yeah. Right. Do oh, there's so much. There's so. Give much. him something juicy. Come on, give us, give, something, a, give us a juicy something. tidbit. The the reason why Craig should never be tech support, right here, right here. All right, this is a little <laughs> later on in life or whatever. We probably had like our third or fourth client, so we're getting him a new laptop. <laughs> And we're all excited or whatever. And he's like, hey, man, every time I sit down to write and do work, the laptop just put random letters and keys, just le- letters on, on my writing. And, <laughs> and I can't really write, man. So I took I took the laptop home with me. And I tried to recreate. It. I couldn't do it. So I bring it back or whatever. And I was like, man, I can't get it. He goes, OK. So he plugs it in, starts doing everything. So I went to go look at his laptop later on that day. And I was like, hey, is this where you normally do your writing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some things plugged into it. You know that. No, what, what's plugged into it? And so I followed the cord and followed the cord up to the top of a bookcase where there sitting upside down is a keyboard that is <laughs> upside down. So every time he plugged his computer into the keyboard and would start typing and start moving on the, the desk, it would start randomly typing. Things. It would shake the desk shake the and desk start. And it would start writing. So he thought he was a phantom keyboard and his keyboard was alive and his laptop was alive, but it just turned out that he just needed to unplug the keyboard that was attached to it. And yes, some people do oh trust me with their tech don't t- tech information. That's a mess. And you're well, starting I mean, to hardware. Well, He's not good on the hardware side. This, this is, is why helpful. everyone needs a David though. That's a common thread in my life. I, I always <clears> say this to clients, to friends, to anyone. You need a David. A friend or acquaintance or person willing to not 
destroy you verbally, which he did not. He laughed. He laughed and told the story, not just to you, but to literally anyone else in the world. But it's that he didn't belittle me as a result of it. It's something I can laugh about too, because it was so ridiculous. Or right. there was a time we have a, we have an awesome client that we we love uh, and he's a one wheel enthusiast. And this device, are you familiar with the one wheel device? It's like a, it literally is like a unicycle, but runs on its own and you need it's like a Segway. It's like I've a Segway. Seen it. Yeah, I see. I see him on South Beach all the time. Meets, uh, Super yeah. cool. Yeah. Super cool. And in yeah. my opinion, requires some coordination. So he came over for a, a meeting about his website, which was totally different. Hold, hold on. Before you continue the story. Yes or no. Should Craig have thought that he could get onto this? device based on what you know of Craig. Yes or no? I, I, he? I, I've seen I've seen all of them and even myself, I'm like, there's no way I would step onto one of those. And based on what I know about Craig already in our short uh relationship, uh the answer is uh, unequivocally no. Let him continue the story. You are correct. It <laughs> should have been a no, but but this person who I do consider a friend at this point, he's brought beer here and he's a wonderful man, assured me here, <laughs> assured me that it was a completely safe and normal experience, even though looking at it, it does not balance itself. It does not have, you know, robotic magnetics to, to do that. So he gets me on the thing. And of course, uh, Gerard, David's going to have to send you the gif of this because thankfully he was recording, but I wiped out. I wiped out pretty hard, hurt my tush tush and a full 360, full 360 thing. pirouette spin, busted butt. And that has become I believe we it, it is used not only because he made it into a GIF, so it got used on our fantasy football thread as a as a graphic to the group to any failure became that that was a whole season That's and it awesome. comes back it comes back anytime mm-hmm. which doesn't brings me joy too because I don't feel the pain anymore but yeah it is difficult to embarrass me but I have put myself in a lot of situations. So now the the Dave is clearly a techie. Would you, Craig, would you consider yourself a techie as well? Only by association. If I can be honest, he does that, that tech support embarrassing story. There are more of them, of him helping me. He has helped me a lot with tech. What maybe the thing is, while my strength isn't necessarily in troubleshooting a phone problem or a or a uh, computer problem or anything like that. The sh- my what I believe is one of the strengths I may have is knowing that I don't know how to do that and how to find the person that can help me. He's a, he's a curious character, and so he'll he will try new tech and try new new things that come out, which which can also equal additional fails and great stories <laughs> yeah. for another podcast. He maybe doesn't win at them all the time, but there's nothing wrong with that. But but he's he is curious that he oh, takes I'll- on new tech. There's no. F- I will try all the new stuff like the Web3 hole I'm in is learning new things and digital wallets and blockchain. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm willing to learn and I'm in there playing. I love that. I love the 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 game of it, of like trying to learn, you know, that's great. My my new my new thing is I'm trying to learn. uh, My sister, my sister put put me on to to, to Twitter. You talked about that earlier. She put me on Twitter years ago and now I'm completely addicted. Uh, And now my new thing is Clubhouse. She put me on to Clubhouse and I'm, I'm starting to ease into it. I, but I Twitter think Spaces I, is cool too. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But Twitter Spaces is cool too. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw that. That was. I guess it's kind of. And then there's something on uh, on Facebook. They're trying to kind of uh, emulate uh, or you yeah. know, assemble Clubhouse as well. But I figure, let me start with the original because I, you of know, course, uh, I want to start with the with the startup guys and give my support. And uh, and that's where all the cool kids are anyway. And uh, that's what Snoop Dogg is. That's what I know. That's so right. I'm oh, he's going, big on Twitter though too. He's big on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But I will. Uh, I, I want to get into this clubhouse thing. My my sister is like a clubhouse guru, and um, and uh, I want to get into that. But anyway, I digress. So uh, I've been wanting to ask you guys this ever since I first learned about you. I have my own opinion on this, but I I, I want to hear yours first. Uh, no pressure. What is the difference between a nerd, a geek, and a dork? Oh wow, I have feelings on this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a dork. Not cool at all. Not cool at all. Can't even get to cool. There's no way to get to cool because you make too many, I think, issues. You you have too many in your own head moments to get to where cool could be. Geek, geek is a is a specialist, someone who's all in on a specific subject matter. There could be a Star Wars geek. There could be a star uh, ver- different from a Star Wars nerd, which I'll get to in a sec. But like, there could be a geek of Marvel, a geek of Star Wars, a, a computer geek, right? But that person, you take them outside of that, 
And boy, are they going to kind of be in deep water. Whereas a nerd, I've, and we are in the age of the nerd, in our opinion over here, a nerd can typically be well-versed and willing to dive in and out of a bunch of different subject matter. They're not necessarily at geek level at any of them, but they can pivot therein and throughout. And, and I think I saw David nodding as I was saying that. I feel like we share that for like dork, no thanks. Geek can be usable, you know, for a very specific thing, but nerds where it's at. You know, I'm 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 uh kind of tearing up because that's the best explanation I've ever heard of differentiation that. between the three. I'm just uh I'm just so impressed. You say that to all the boys. <laughs> that's that's just I, I, that's just perfection. I, I don't even know how to, I thought that I was going to come at, drop some knowledge on you guys about the differences, but uh, that's exact. You guys formulated it and, and expressed it the way that it is in my head better than I could have. So, so it's an inception uh, bra- right there. I just Leo DiCaprio you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, bra- bravo to you, by the way, speaking of inception and, and who's a geek and who's a nerd and who's, and, and, and I am a geek when it comes to lucid dreaming and inception is like the, the, the Inception and The Matrix are the only movies I've seen that kind of get anywhere close to what that experience is like. Well, but can I, I ask you then just full, yeah. real, real honest curiosity, excited, yeah. not excited in the middle for the upcoming Matrix uh, movie? My excitement level is at a nine, yep. but it, it, and it wouldn't be it would it would be at a 10 if uh, I'm just so pissed that Morpheus isn't going to be in it because apparently he died in the uh, in one of the video games. And I just, I just think that that's that's agreed. I, I think they, you know, missed the mark or couldn't afford Lawrence Fishburne, one or the other. They, Keanu's probably so expensive, but who knows? <laughs> it's going to make so much money. Just pay everyone what they want. I mean, I agree with you. I agree. Uh, with you. But uh, anyway, so yeah, my my excitement level is like at, at a nine, definitely. There is one question, one last question I want to ask. Please, DC or Marvel? Wow, wow. Dave, I'm going to have different. I'll let David go first because I think his is more cut and dry. So my my OG is DC. Because I was a Superman boy growing up. My so man. He's my I favorite. Lean, I lean on, on DC. However, I, I'm not going to say that they put out a quality product in the recent years. But, but growing up, I, I was all in, all DC. While I prefer Marvel's movies and stand by that, DC is home. Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and these icons that they put out, I think for a reason, have stood the 100-year test of time, almost 100 years on Superman. These characters can be reshaped. And I know Marvel does that too, but I don't think any characters touch what some of those core DC ones do in terms of like literal reach, organic reach through the whole world, not just America. So that's why I think we, we end up being DC stands over here. I think that's exactly right. And I, you know, Superman has been my favorite forever. I mean, uh, the Marvel movies are better. I, but uh, I do feel, and I, I don't know, is, am I the only one that feels that the concept of Infinity War was kind of ripped off of that whole, uh, what DC came out with first with like Steppenwolf and he was collecting all the, uh, uh, the pieces. What the hell were they again? I forget uh, all yeah. of them. I know where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but anyway, uh, so so in the, with with them it was with Marvel was the Infinity Stones, but then uh, with DC, which came out first, I believe that 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 movie came out first. He was collecting cubes or something. Yeah, it was those cubes. But, D- those but, energy but wouldn't cubes. you agree that DC, even while Marvel has made more money over 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 the whole totality, right? There are a few DC standalones: Aquaman, Wonder Woman, just to name the two, that are better standalones than any individual Marvels because really what brings most people into Marvel. And I, again, I love the Marvel movies. Don't get me wrong. Is that there's a longer arc to it. That's and th- that's a beautiful thing that, that right. Feige did. And that team put together that, that arc and those Easter eggs are amazing. But right. I think that the DC characters, and that's why those standalone movies can matter so much and do so well. Those characters are iconic on a level slightly above in in our, in my opinion. No, I think that's right. And you know, who can forget the um the Dark Knight series and uh, oh, uh I mean that's that's just so epic. There's a new one. I know, Robert Pattinson. I'm I'm oh, hey, I'm excited about anyone that's going to do movies of the characters like that that I end up loving. I waffle. I was a Superman number 1 all the time, but DC's comic run, the Black Label comic run that came out over the last couple of years moved me over to 
Batman a lot because boy, did they write it cool. They drew it and wrote it in ways that were so awesome that it was also meant for more of like a PG 13 and up audience um, that those graphic novels killed. And it brought me back to Batman as like now slightly ahead of Superman. Wow. Interesting. Well, that that's, that's, that's acceptable, but I'll tell you this. And uh, I'll tell you this, and I haven't said this, share this with many people because it's just never come up in conversation, but I used to be obsessed with this show. My friends and I, you know, we're living in Miami and this show entourage comes out, comes out. And my friend had this huge penthouse and we would have entourage parties every Every week, every I think it came out on Sundays, and we would invite all these people over to his penthouse and like have food and whatever. So if you watch that show, so um, uh, Vincent Chase is Aquaman. Heck and yeah, so, he is. Yeah, and then, and then they make Aquaman, and they show you know he's making the movie with James Cameron and whatever, whatever. And I'm like, that's interesting, but you know they could never make a movie like that in real life. They could never do Aquaman in any kind of way because how are you going to film underwater and whatever, whatever. So when Aquaman was actually coming out, I was like, this is going to be horrible. I mean, this is, I, I was like, I, I was, I, I went in with the lowest expectations and you know what? It blew me away. It blew me Isn't away. Isn't that the best though? When you go in with low expectations, that's the only reason I'm I'm worried for both of us because I'm with you on Matrix at a nine. When you go in with high expectations, it 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 can lead to something weird. But I also went into Aquaman low, except big love for Jason Momoa. My wife, myself, we met him at Megacon. The dude was amazing. He walked the whole line high-fiving everyone with a broken foot. Like the dude is just on another level. So we were set to love it. Even if it stunk, it didn't stink. It was fun. And I can't wait for the sequel. It was phenomenal. I can't wait either. Well, look, on that note, I'm, I'm, I'm so jazzed. I'm uh, guys, what a great interview. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm even more excited now, now that I've spoken to you to, um, to tune into your podcast and become well, thank you. Uh, one of your, one of your biggest stands. And uh, before we go, please let me know, do you have anything coming up uh, that you want to tell us about or anything you want to promote? Well, honestly, the, the show, Tech Exploration, will will be going live here in the next couple of what weeks slash months. I mean, it's definitely uh, on the verge. We've got a few episodes coming, and then you know, I mean, if it's you know a plug moment, we do offer a free. It's on YouTube, but you could check us out at IWantClarity.com to get to the YouTube link. We have free webinars on there about literally like things you could do to optimize your website and and do a little better with your social media and things like that. Just hundred percent free. Uh, we have some webinars up there. It is just us talking and screen sharing stuff. We do answer questions because we do them live and people will type in questions, but I think it's a fun way for people to get some information and maybe even get a, get a kickstart for them because unfortunately we're not able to help everyone. You know, we have bandwidth issues that any business would have. So uh, we started putting out some free webinars to help out. That's great. And so in furtherance of a plug for uh, you guys and Clarity Creative, tell me where can we find you and your company on social media? Oh, absolutely. Hit us up on Twitter at I Want Clarity. Uh, it's just I-W-A-N-T-C-L-A-R-I-T-Y. Hit us up there or our website, IWantClarity.com. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much, guys. This has been a great one. I can't wait to uh, hear you guys soon. And hey, look, don't forget about your boy who gave you your first uh, shot on the on the on the Florida Podcast we Network. Sure if you ever want to bring me on and talk about how much I don't know about tech, um, I'm happy to be a guest on the podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or, but here's the thing: you probably know stuff you don't even know that you know. We could talk about you were in the scene in Miami and South Beach over the years and things like that. There's a lot that. Oh, kind of you comes don't even up know. in there. Let's make it happen. <laughs> no problem. I would I would love to do it. So uh, thank you so much, guys. I wish you much success. It's going to be great. And I look forward to uh, the ascendance of the Tech Exploration podcast here on the Florida Podcast Network. I'm sure you guys will make my sister, producer Jemmy, very, very proud. Thank hope you. so. Thank you. Thank you. So as you guys probably could tell... We hit it off. I, th- I think I've made some new nerdy besties. I-, I loved every second of that interview, which actually went a lot longer than you know. Perhaps there's some extra tidbits that uh, we might share with you down the road. But Craig and David were great. You can see you know, their, their, their friendship. It's difficult to mix business with friendships. But if you can do it and get away with it and it works, there's nothing better. There are so many things that I could pick out from that interview uh, to talk about in my fresh take. But 
I'm just going to go back to the one simple tenet that came from, I guess, Craig, although he said he was inspired by David, which is that curiosity is an underrated attribute. I really regret when I was in college, all I did was focus on school, school, school and getting good grades and also, you know, my extracurriculars. Up until then, I'd never, never cared about what's going on in the world. I'd never followed current events, didn't know anything going on in politics or, or just uh, in the world. I think that was a big mistake. And I also didn't even vote until I think my senior year of college. I made the mistake of thinking that what's going on in the world around us particularly in politics, doesn't affect me personally. Boy, was I wrong. Here I am at one, at the probably the most prestigious educational institution in the country, if not the world, and I was being so stupid, so stupid with blinders on to the rest of the world. And I made the decision when I became a young lawyer uh, because you have to know about current events in order to do your job correctly. And then I ended up just becoming a voracious reader of the news and what's going on. And now I vote. I vote in every single election. Elections are local. Politics are local. You vote for dog catcher and that that will affect your life. OK, so, you know, these guys and I are clearly of the same ilk. We're voracious learners, and I make it a point to try to learn something new every day. I take it as a challenge, and I understand that I will never know everything, but I want to take at least one step every day to learning more and reducing that chasm between the knowledge that's out there and what's in my brain. And so I try to learn at least one new thing every day. For example, yesterday, wifey, for those of you who are not ethically inclined, wifey, that's my girlfriend, the love of my life. So I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> my girl who's half Cuban and half Puerto Rican and speaks fluent Spanish, she taught me something about her views on Puerto Rico and, you know, something that I never thought about before. And I said, baby, you just helped me make my quota for the day. I just learned something new. Thank you very much. So I just love to learn. And these guys, I cannot wait to either bring my butt up to Orlando to hang out with them or uh, try to convince them to come down, hang out with me. But at the end of the day, these are the kinds of people that I love to surround myself with, people that are voracious learners, people that you can share experiences and thoughts with and philosophies with and and do it while having fun at the same time. And that's clearly what I um, what I think came through in this interview. I've never met these guys personally, but I can't wait for their podcast and for me to use that podcast as yet another learning outlet for myself personally. Knowing what I know about them, it's also gonna be very funny and entertaining. So I gotta give kudos to the FPN team and everybody that's brought these guys into the fold. I gotta give big ups to my sister giving us the opportunity to bring so many viewpoints and minds to the Florida Podcast Network. And thank you to my wonderful, wonderful production assistant, Amber, who brings all of this together. I am so looking forward to having Craig and David feed my curiosity and my insatiable quest for knowledge and laughter and good times. So I can't wait to hear um, Texploration coming soon. Please keep checking the website, keep checking all our social media for its release date, and we'll keep you updated on this side. Thank you so much for listening to this latest episode of the Fresh Mix Podcast, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. For details and show notes about today's show and our guests, go to freshmixpodcast.com. I'd really love your feedback, both on today's guest and on my fresh take. The Florida Podcast Network has a closed Facebook group exclusively for super fans of their shows like Florida's Fresh Mix. So we all look forward to hanging out in there with you. Just search for FPN Insiders on Facebook to leave us comments, get early scoops, contests, and other special treats, or just to complain about Florida like... Well, I'm not sure if this is a complaint, but it's definitely an observation that never fails every year. It literally just happened yesterday. The temperature dips to 70 and people are busting out with the long sleeves and the uh, and the turtlenecks. Winter clothes 
that they have no business wearing. They're just waiting all year because they spent apparently spent a lot of money on these winter clothes. But they're gonna walk one block in South Beach, totally start sweating in those clothes and get overheated. I just always found it very、uh, hilarious to see people throwing on winter clothes when it's 70 degrees. But anyway, be sure to visit all the great shows in the Florida Podcast Network. You can find them at floridapodcastnetwork.com. Keep catching who's fresh in the Florida mix with Florida's Fresh Mix podcast.